Hello everyone, I'm Ashani Sarkar and today I'm going to present a topic from industrial macrobiology which is fermentation media and raw materials. Fermentation media So microorganisms used for fermentation process grow on or in growth medium which satisfied the nutritional needs of microbes. Complete analysis is needed to be done to establish the most favorable medium for the growth of the microbe used for fermentation. Formulating medium at lab scale can be done by adding main ingredients like water, carbon source, nitrogen source, minerals and other supplements. In pure form and in required quantities which support the growth of microbe whereas the same may not support the satisfactory growth of the same organism at industrial level. Now uh, following criteria need to be satisfied for the material to be treated as medium at industrial level are first it should give maximum yield of product second it should give minimum yield of undesired product third it should give consistently available throughout the year and fourth it should be cheap media for industrial fermentation so the media used for the growth of microorganisms in industrial fermentation must contain all the elements in a suitable form for the synthesis of cellular substances as well as the metabolic products in the lab pure to find chemicals may be used for culturing microorganisms for industrial fermentations, undefined and complex substrates are frequently used for economic reasons. Cheaper substrates are advantageous since they minimize the production cost of the fermented products. Waste from agriculture and byproducts of other industries are generally preferred. Now, let's dig into raw materials. So, raw materials. In raw materials, first we will see saccharine materials. So in this category includes sugar cane, sugar beet, molasses and fruit juice. So molasses is a byproduct of the cane and beet sugar industry. It is recovered at any of several stages in the sugar refining process. The chemical composition of cane molasses is variable. It depends not only on the quality and variety of sugar cane but to a greater extent on the sugar production process. About 95% of the total sugar content in cane molasses is fermentable. It is particularly rich in biotin, pantothenic acid, thiamine, phosphorus and sulfur. Organic nitrogen is lower than beet molasses because it does not contain betaine. But this substance is not assimilated by yeast. Beet molasses is produced using the same process as cane molasses. However, the major use of cane molasses in India today is in the alcohol industry which uses it to produce ethanol, country wine and other spirits such as rum, brandy, gin and whiskey. Fruit juice So fruit juice contains soluble sugars. For example, grape juice contains glucose and fructose. Therefore, fruit juice can be used as a carbon source in the fermentation industry. Grapes are used for wine production. When grapes are harvested, they are crushed to produce raw juice. Wort is a highly acidic juice. Uh, it contains 17% sugar by weight and 1% acid. Mainly tartaric acid, that too D-tartaric acid and a small amount of malic acid. 0.3% ash, mainly containing potassium and phosphorus. In grapes, a low nitrogen content is desirable as excessive nitrogen content can lead to undesirable fermentation. Cheese whey. So, the straw colored liquid that is created as a byproduct of cheese making is called cheese whey. It is an important waste product for the dairy industry. It cannot be thrown away without proper treatment. Therefore, it is desirable to use it for useful products. Much effort has gone into discovering its uses. However, it is often more profitable sold for use as a pig feed. Currently, the dairy industry in the United States produces more than 30 billion pounds of liquid whey annually. 
As late as 1974, it was estimated that only slightly more than half of the whey produced was used. About 280 million pounds of dry whey were pro- produced that year. And it is good source of carbon. It is used for the production of alcohol, single cell protein, vitamin B12, lactic acid and gibberellic acid. Now, let's get into the second part of it, which is starchy materials. So, starch requires pre-treatment to be converted into fermentable sugar. It is done enzymatically or chemically. Various methods are available to convert complex carbohydrates into relatively simple materials. Generally, methods of saccharification of starchy materials involve the use of enzyme preparations or dilute acids or a, comb- a combination of both. The choice of conversion depends uh, on intended use, availability of hydrolysis agent and associated cost. For example, a continuous biomass production process developed in Sweden uses yeast to hydrolyze starch into fermentable sugar. Candida utilis then grew on these sugars. There are mainly two types of sources of commercial starch. One is grains like wheat, rice, corn, etc. And second is rhizomes like potato, cassava, etc. Grains have a low moisture content while roots and tubers have high moisture content. So let's move on to the third part which is cellulosic materials. So among them sulphide waste liquor. Let's get started. So sulphide waste liquor is produced by paper industry. The liquid left over after pulping paper wood with calcium bisulphide under heat and pressure to form a pulp creates a serious waste problem for pulp manufacturer. Hence, they dispose it into the river as a common practice and several states have enacted for river pollution or water pollution. So, sulphide waste liquid can be diluted fermentation medium for ethanol production by Saccharomyces cerevisiae and for cultivation of torulized cells for the feed. So, sulphide uh, waste is there for a dilute sugar solution containing about 2% sugar. These sugars include hexose, D-glucose, gal- D-galactose and D-manose and the pentose sugars d xylulose and d- uh, L-arabinose. However, since soft wood has more hexose sugars and hard wood has more pentoses, the relative amounts of these sugars uh, in sulfated waste water depend on some extent on wood that has been digested. So, fermentable carbohydrates from wood waste are a virtually untapped source of nutrients. Wood molasses. So, sulfite-like sugars are obtained by acid hydrolysis of the wood pulp itself. It can produce 65% to 85% fermentable sugar. Several acid hydrolysis methods were developed particularly during World War II. So, sulfuric acid is usually used at a concentration of about 100 grams, 0 to 5% in a temperature range of 150 to 185 degrees Celsius. Syrup can be obtained from crumbs during the continuous process. This syrup may contain 4% to 5% reducing sugar for a total yield of 45% to 55%. It can be concentrated to produce a molasses form of xylulose. Soft wood, sucrose contains about 85% hexose and 15% pentose sugar while hardwood xylose contains about 65% hexose and 35% pentose sugar. Rice straw. So rice straw is an important agricultural byproduct in Asia. Asia's annual production is 561 million tons or 90% of world production. In its natural form, it is inferior to animal feed due to their size, unpleasant taste, low protein content and low digestibility. Various fermentation processes have been developed to provide microorganisms or microbial products that increase the nutritional value of animal feeds. Now, the fourth part is hydrocarbons and vegetable oils. So hydrocarbons used as fermentation substrates are usually mixtures of different hydrocarbon components. This fermented raw material is relatively cheap. However, refined hydrocarbon fractions or hydrocarbon compounds are more expensive. Hydrocarbon substrates such as diesel and N paraffin for single cell protein production, biomass of yeast fungi um, and um, 
C tropicalis candida 2343 etc can be produced in large amounts of aerobic so various companies used paraffin barrel processes at large pilot plant the paraffin used as carbon and carbon source in the east uh, uh, single cell protein processes was prepared by the molecular sieve absorption method the purity of obtained in paraffin varies from 97 to 99%. The vegetable oil obtained by decreasing the seed of plant is called vegetable oil. So depending on the degree of unsaturation, they can be divided into three main groups. First is oleic acid, uh, which is non-dry form. So uh, it is generated or it is like olives and peanut butter. And second is linoleic acid which is semi dry form and they are uh, like they contain high levels of mono unsaturated fatty acids and are found in corn oil sunflower oil and cotton seed oil and the third one is linoleic oil which is a dry type and these include linseed oil soybean oil which contains fatty acids with three double bonds now the last and the final part which is nitrogenous materials so in it the first one is corn steep liquor so corn steep liquor is a byproduct of starch extraction from maize and its first use in fermentations was for penicillin production in 1940s the extract composition of the liquor varies depending on the quality of the maize and the processing uh, conditions Concentrated extracts generally contain about 4% nitrogen including a wide range of amino acids along with vitamins and minerals. Soya bean meal. So the material left after soya beans are de-oiled and is called soya bean meal. So it contains about 8% nitrogen. Soya bean meal is a more complex source of nitrogen than corn liquor. It is used as a component of the fermentation medium. Residues remaining after soya beans have been processed to extract the bulk of their oil and are composed of 50% protein, 8% non-protein nitrogenous compound and 30% carbohydrates, 1% oil. Distillar soluble So when grain or corn is used to make alcohol, the alcohol is distilled from the fermented grain or corn, leaving a residue. The remaining suspended solids were removed by sieving, leaving the effluent. The effluent is then concentrated to a solid content of 35% to produce a vaporized syrup. The syrup is then dried in a cylinder to obtain distillation solubles. It can be used as a production media as to provide nitrogen as well as many equivalent food factors like vitamin B complex. So lastly, we will read about pharma industry. So pharma media is nothing more than a pure yellow finely ground powder made from cotton germ. It contains 56% protein, 24% carbohydrate, 5% fat and 5% ash. It is used as a component in industrial environments for example in the production of tetracycline. So pharma media is typically used in making uh, antibiotics and other medicines. Now let's take few seconds to observe this flowchart. So till now the things we have which we have discussed and read are all present in this flowchart. So now the last topic for today's presentation is sterilization. So as we all know for anything, any uh, lab work or any preparation sterilization is quite recommended and required. So fermenter can be sterilized separately for aseptic operation of pilot scale and industrial fermentation processes. Sterile medium which is sterilized in a separate cooker or continuous medium cooker on many fermentation is taken to the sterile empty fermenter. On the other hand, media required for the fermentation processes and fermenter both are sterilized together in a single process of sterilization. All the fermentation processes are not aseptic, but contamination by microbes need to be maintained minimum by carried out media boiling and pasteurization.